Hello everybody, this is Ralph Martin from RJ Quality Consulting and based on a lot of questions I've been getting from my followers, I wanted to do a quick video on measurement uncertainty requirements for testing laboratories under the ISO IEC 17025 requirements. Um, so in the next 10 minutes we'll cover what uh, you know these concepts mean, why they are crucial for lab quality, and how to implement and report them in practice. This is aimed at uh, quality managers, laboratory directors, and other uh, individuals that would be responsible for the laboratory compliance and accuracy. Um, and by the end of this video, you should have a good understanding of the key requirements uh, as stipulated in Clause 7.6, which is the Clause on Measurement Uncertainty, and Section 6.5, which is really measurement traceability, but it does deal a lot with measurement uncertainty requirements. And then finally, Section 7.8, which is the report reporting requirements for test reports and calibration reports, which also has some requirements on measurement uncertainty, and then some practical steps to fulfill them and, and these uncertainty requirements in your laboratory. So what I'd like to do is, um, first of all, with the uh, introduction and objectives, ISO 17025 is really all about producing technically valid and trustworthy results. So within this standard, measurement uncertainty and metrological traceability are really the cornerstone concepts that ensure our test results are meaningful and comparable. And in this session, we'll zero on the three key requirements that involve measurement traceability, evaluating measurement uncertainty as stipulated in Clause 7.6, maintaining metrological traceability as stipulated in section in, section in Clause number uh, 6.5, and then properly reporting the calibration or testing results, depending on whether you are a testing laboratory or a calibration laboratory. Uh, this video is really to discuss um, uncertainty requirements for testing laboratories. I, I've gotten a lot of um, questions about uncertainty requirements, so I'm going to focus mostly on testing laboratory. And the, the, the calibration uncertainties would be what a testing laboratory would need to have in order to meet the requirements of the uncertainty requirements for 17025 and the decision making that goes along with that in your test reports. So let's start off with, you know, what is measurement uncertainty, first of all? So we let's start by defining measurement uncertainty. So no measurement is really entirely precise. No matter how high quality your instrumentation is or how careful your analyst analyze the um, product, there will always be some doubt about the exact true value. Measurement uncertainty is essentially a numerical expression of that doubt. Formally, it is defined as the range around a measured value that likely contains the true value within a stated confidence level. Um, we care about uncertainty because it tells us how reliable and meaningful a result is. Um, the uh, measurement evaluation or measurement uncertainty evaluation requirements. So 17025 has explicit requirements on evaluating measurement uncertainty, as I mentioned in Clause 7.6. Labs must identify all of the significant sources and contributions of the uncertainty and then evaluate that measurement uncertainty for each calibration. So for testing labs, even if a rigorous calculation isn't possible, an estimate is required, um, especially when it comes to the um, estimating the contribution factors, such as pipettes, balances, uh, measurement uncertainty that is involved in each step of the testing process. And following a recognized method that controls measurement uncertainty can be sufficient. So once established and validated, uncertainty values can often um, be used. The um, how, so how do you evaluate measurement uncertainty? The, you know, the process 
of evaluating uncertainty includes identifying all sources, as I mentioned, the instrument, the environment, the operator, um, the individual measurement devices that you're using, and then you want to estimate each one of those contributions and then combining them using the root sum of squares method. So type A evaluations are based on repeat measurements, while type B rely on certificates and prior knowledge. Um, explained, um, or uh, the other thing is what we refer to as expanded uncertainty. Expanded uncertainty is reported using a coverage factor, usually a K factor equaling two, and then it's required that you would have a 95% confidence in your measurement uncertainty results. There is a little distribution graph I have here on this slide which shows a normal distribution with the 95% confidence level showing, you know, the probability density on the, you know, the left and then the standard deviation on the right on this particular uh, graph. So here's an example of an uncertainty budget table. Uh, this shows a simplified uncertainty budget. Each component of uncertainty is listed um, with an estimated standard uncertainty. We combine these components using RSS to obtain the total combined uncertainty. And this kind of table helps identify the dominant contributors and useful um, for both compliance and continuous improvement. So in this graph, you can see we have the standard uncertainty listed and then we have on, on the uh, horizontal axis there the um, just an example of an instrument maybe the environmental contributions uh, contributions from sampling activities maybe uh, contributions from the operator and then any reference material involved you can also do this with individual uh, measurement uh, equipment such as pipettes, balances, and anything that would have a contribution to the measurement uncertainty. Then we want to talk a little bit about metrological traceability. So this is another uh, foundational concept in ISO 17025 as stipulated in really section 7 point, or I'm sorry, um, 6.5. So traceability is the idea that you can track your measurement results back to a national or international standard through an unbroken series of calibrations. Each calibration should be done by a competent provider and include uncertainty values. So this is why it's required that if you're going to do a use a service provider for calibration, say on a balance or pipette, that that um, laboratory is a ISO 17025 laboratory that is providing a service for ISO 17025. And you want to be careful with that because even though you're using an ISO 17025 calibration provider, they may not always be providing the service in accordance with ISO 17025 because these laboratories have other customers besides ISO 17025 customers. They might have a customer that's interested in ANSI 571 calibrations or something like that. So you want to make sure that you're communicating with these providers to specifically let them know you want your calibration performed in accordance with ISO 17025. It's very important that you make that delineation. Um, so section 6.5, traceability requirements. We want to establish traceability to the SI units. A use, like I said, accredited calib calibration providers under 17025. If you're purchasing certified reference materials, you want to make sure they are 17034 um, pro required producer. Uh, so basically what we have here is you, you have a graph that shows the SI units that are unbroken chain of traceability through an NMI to your calibration lab reference equipment and lab instrumentations. NMI stands for National Metrology Institute. This is, for example, NIST or NPL, PTB. Um, so basically, if you're using a producer of reference materials that is ISO 17034, 
that would be an N a proper NMI institute. If you're using a calibration laboratory to do your calibrations, you want to make sure it's an ISO 17025 calibration company. This would be an indication that it's a proper NMI or National Metrology uh, Institute that is being used to perform those traceability requirements because the reason um, this is important for measurement uncertainty is that those providers on their reports, whether it be a calibration certificate or a um, certificate of analysis when it pertains to certified reference materials, is that they provide an expanded measurement uncertainty with that K factor equaling to an, a, at least a 95% confidence level, and that is on the uh, certificate itself, which is a uncertainty requirement. Um, a calibration lab under ISO 17025, for example, is required to put the expanded measurement uncertainty on their calibration reports. And as a testing lab, you need that documentation to provide and meet the requirements of uncertainty of measurement as stipulated in section 7.6 of the standard. So you want to be careful uh, with your traceability requirements. Um, the other thing is uh, ensuring traceability. Um, yeah, ensuring traceability in actual practice. So traceability is maintained by regularly calibrating all instruments using accredited labs, as I mentioned, documenting internal calibrations properly, and the proper handling of your certified reference materials, and keeping records up to date and make sure no link in the chain lapses. There's no uh, unbroken chain of traceability to the SI units through NIST. In challenging areas such as chemical testing, you want to make sure you're using proficiency testing, participation, and consensus methods to support that um, traceability. Then finally, we get into the Clause 7.8 for the reporting of results. So Clause 7.8 focuses on how to report your testing results. And for calibration labs, this is the requirement that meets all the requirements that would go on to a calibration certificate. And as a testing lab, your calibration certificates that you're using for your equipment would have the proper uh, uncertainty of measurement reported. So therefore, you would have that documentation as a testing lab as well. Um, so you want to make sure that test reports, measurement uncertainty that's relevant is reported properly, and this traceability should be documented, especially on those calibration certificates. Also, when stating pass-fail results, um, you want to apply the decision rule and document how uncertainty was considered in that decision rule. For example, if you have a pass-fail criteria in micro microbiological testing, you want to make sure that you've defined what your pass-fail criteria is and how you considered the uncertainty of measurement in that decision rule. Um, and that's very important because the uncertainty would determine whether it passed or failed. So you want to make sure that you've considered that in your pass-fail criteria. Um, so in, in summary, you know, to wrap this up, make uncertainty and traceability a part of your lab's routine quality system. You want to discuss it during management review. You want to have it all um, documented properly, and you want to review your uh, uncertainty estimates periodically, especially during management review, and then keep your calibration records tight and um, clearly communicate in the, these items in your reports. These practices not only ensure ISO 17025 compliance, but also it builds credibility and trust within your laboratory's test results. Um, and, and finally, I wanted to give you some resources also um, underneath this video, I, I will give some links that you can look at. First of all, I do have a, a blog article which I wrote that is all about um, what we just discussed, measurement traceability. I'm on my blog post right now. Um, it, it's ISO 17025 measurement uncertainty, mastering precision in lab testing. You could read this full article. I go into a lot of detail on uncertainty of measurement, key takeaways. There's a video 
Um, also, you have access to my quality manual template. I have designed a complete um, ISO 17025 quality manual template, which you can get access to. Just click on the link here. It'll show you how you can get access to the template and all of the required procedures, forms, and policies as well. And then I also have a course there that you can get um, on how to master measurement uncertainty without getting overwhelmed. Um, it breaks down complex formulas into easy to understand logic. It includes real lab examples and downloadable tools and ideal for it's for both testing and calibration labs and it is a self-paced course you can just click on this course and go to the udemy page it's an awesome course i've looked at it i i highly recommend it you can access this course from my blog post and i will leave the blog post link under the in the description box of this video and then also you'll have access to um the 45 minute um, consultation, a free consultation that I provide. You can book your free 45-minute consultation with me. Just schedule it on my calendar. Um, you get a free 45-minute consultation to discuss any of your laboratory accreditation needs that you might have or any questions that you might have as well. So those are some really awesome resources that are available to you. Just look in the description box underneath this video and you'll see three or four links that you can look for additional resources. Also, if you have any questions at all regarding the content of this video, you can always leave a comment below in in the uh, the YouTube description. If you're watching this video on my blog post, um, feel free to leave a comment on the blog post. I always usually respond to those comments, at least within 24 hours. So this is uh, Ralph Martin signing out. You make it a great day. Take care.